What's going on guys? So I am out on the Blue Ridge Parkway right now. My wife and I were looking for mushrooms. It's actually a mushroom that I call a mummy mushroom. In light of it being uh, October uh, with Halloween right around the corner, I think it's an excellent mushroom for us to take a look at. So if you're interested, stick around. Okay, check it out. Right there it is. This is the birch polypore. And what we're looking at is a birch tree. Obviously, it's dead and dying. It's on its way out. But what we have here are some birch polypores. So why would I refer to this as a mummy mushroom? Well, this mushroom was actually found on a man uh, in 1991 in the Italian Alps. And he was mummified. He'd been there for 5,300 years, roughly, something like that. And he actually had these birch polypores on him. And that's fantastic when you think about it. To think that someone way back then was actually utilizing this mushroom and we're utilizing it today. Actually, I think it's underutilized because of the medicinal value that's actually in this mushroom. It's tremendous. And the medicinal value that I'm actually talking about is it's antiviral. It's, it's got, it's anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor. It's actually an antiseptic. Uh, it's been assumed that uh, the, uh, the fella that they found it on, the mummy they found it on, was using it that way. And it's super easy to identify. I mean, yeah, just take a look at it. There's really no other mushroom that looks like it. Here's the thing. If you find a mushroom that is growing on a birch tree, chances are, and it looks like this, you, you, you've got it. I mean, it's going to be the birch polypore. You don't have to worry about poisonous lookalikes or anything like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a little bit off. Cut this right off the tree here. Check that out. Look at the underside of it. Very cool. Now this is a young specimen, so it hasn't fully developed. It is a polypore mushroom. Right now you can't really see the pores very well at all because it's not fully developed, which is perfect. This is good. Now you can harvest them when they get a little older, but uh, you don't want this to be all brown in here. Uh, this has a white spore print, but you really don't need to take a spore print. Like I said, super easy to identify. Let me get this other one down here. If I can, very tough. It's very, very tough. This mushroom is full of chitin, just like all the other medicinal mushrooms out there. Full of chitin. Awesome. All right, I think there, where, there's one more. There it is. You gonna stay here? You. You coming. Got my mushroom babies. <laughs> okay, I, I found some more, but I, what I wanted to show you was this right here. This is one that is clearly past its prime. I wouldn't harvest that. But if we come over here and we take a look at this guy, I'm just gonna pull him off. I'm not even gonna cut him. We'll just pull that right off. Look, you can see the underside. Looks good, nice and white. Awesome. Okay, and the last one. Mm. Yeah, look at that. Awesome. We'll put that in with the rest of these. Yeah, right on. Okay, so one haircut and a day later, here I am. Let's clean these mushrooms. Now, you can dry brush this if you want to. It's really simplistic. There's not much to it. Uh, if you don't feel like dry brushing it, or maybe it's a little more dirty uh, than, than you like, just run it under some water real quick. Uh, I wouldn't recommend soaking it, but definitely run it under some water. Clean both sides. Get the, uh, get the outside and obviously the pore side. And, and that's it. It's very simplistic. Okay, there is a downside when you're tearing the mushrooms off of the tree. You're left with all of that bark still attached. Very tough and, and hard to get off. So you're gonna have to cut that off. And I mean, it's not hard to do. I mean, you just literally just slice off the back of the mushroom here. But if you look closely, 
right in here. And this is actually a pretty clean one, but a lot of times you'll find a lot of bark in this area right through here, even after you, you know, have trimmed that off. Um, and, you know, I, I really don't worry about it. Let's see, here's a slice that's a good example of that. You can really see all that bark still in there. But I don't worry about it. I, you know, uh, if it's relatively clean when it's like this, I will utilize those pieces as, you know, as if they're just all white, like something like this, you know, which is awesome. Look how clean that is. That looks beautiful. That's fantastic. I'll just keep on slicing. And that's when it starts to get better. I mean, you keep slicing and it gets wider and wider and wider. You can see that. Look at that. And if we go back, you can still see the bark in there. Those are not wormholes. That's not a wormhole. That's bark. Uh, which is wild, uh, you know, when the mushroom is growing, it's just uh, pulling that bark off of the tree as it grows, so pretty cool stuff. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, so once we get the mushrooms cleaned up and sliced up, uh, you're going to place them on a cookie sheet, and at that point, we're going to set our oven at 170. That's Fahrenheit. That's also the lowest setting. I guess for the rest of the planet, it's going to be 76 Celsius, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, we're going to set it to the lowest setting possible, uh, place them in there, and let them go for one hour. After that, after an hour kicks off, we're going to pull them out, flip them over, and let them go a whole nother hour. So two hours total. Uh, after that, it should be good and dry. Should be. Uh, just check it out. If it needs to go a little longer, obviously go a little longer. And that's at about an eighth of an inch on the slices. Uh, if you go a little thicker, obviously your drying time is going to take a little longer. Okay, so while the mushrooms are drying, what I like to do is actually make a decoction. And so, you know, it takes two hours to dry the mushrooms in the oven. Well, it takes two hours to, uh, to make a decoction. So what I do is just slice up a few fresh mushrooms, uh, the birch polypore, uh, put them in a pot and add some water, obviously, and let that simmer for roughly, well, two hours. Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, it really, it's, it, it really is a good tea. It's a, it's an acquired taste. I'm gonna, let me tell you that. It's an acquired taste. There's, it's very bitter, but uh, your system gets used to it after a while. Uh, your taste buds get used to it, and it's it's almost as if your body craves it. It's pretty interesting, but definitely good stuff. I mean, it really is. And when I say good stuff, I'm not so much talking about the taste because it is very bitter. What I'm talking about is the health benefits, man. How fantastic. I mean, right now, bringing in all of those polysaccharides into my system, Good stuff, man, really good stuff. And with the antiviral end of things, I mean, good Lord, where we are in the planet right now, it's crazy. So uh, you need good good stuff like this in your system. And uh, so I encourage you to give it a shot. And it's a great way to kill the time while you're, while you're drying the mushrooms. Okay, if bitterness isn't your thing and you really want to, you know, trim that down or tone it down, I should say, uh, you could add cleavers to this. That would definitely change the flavoring of it, as well as stinging nettle. That's another good one. Orange peels is great. And, you know, with it being Halloween and fall, I don't know, throw in a cinnamon stick or something like that. Definitely play around with it because uh, you, you certainly can minimize that, that bitter flavor. Okay, now that the mushroom is dry and we've talked about the decoction slash tea, tea is really what I call it, um, it's time to make the tincture. Now, with birch polypore, it's super easy to grind. It's just like turkey tail, which by the way, if you haven't seen my turkey tail video where I actually grind it up and we turn it into a tincture, I'll click on the link right above, it'll take you right to it. Um, but let me show you how we do this. Okay, so this is super simplistic. I mean, really all you have to do is break it up into smaller pieces. And what you're really trying to do, at least this is what I try to do, is get them as small as like a coffee bean because I am going to use a coffee grinder to grind this up. Uh, once you get the right size, it just stick them in there and grind away and it works out perfect. Now, why grind? I mean, why grind the mushroom? Well, the reality is you're trying to increase the surface area as much as possible. More exposure 
to the surface area. That's the key to the whole thing because at that point you can extract more of the goodness. All of the, all of the polysaccharides and the triterpenes and all of that is in the cell wall of the mushroom and it's bound by that chitin. Once you grind it up and open up all those cell walls, you are able to extract more of all that goodness and love <laughs> and ingest it. So it's, it's fantastic. Now, speaking of ingestion, <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> anyway, don't eat it. You, you don't eat this mushroom. I mean, it's just not a mushroom that you're going to eat. Uh, can you eat it? Yeah, you can, but you might as well just go ahead and take a fiber pill because that's all you're doing. You will not extract any of the medicinal value from the mushroom just by consuming it. Now, if you put it into like a soup, yeah, at that point and you let it simmer for two hours, uh, you're gonna, it's going to draw out all the goodness by doing it that way. Now, I guess if you want to eat it, go right ahead. <laughs> Gobble that sucker up, but uh, you'll be on the express lane to the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, remember, there's really only two ways to get all of that goodness out. That's through water-soluble compounds, pulling those compounds out through a hot water extraction, or a tincture, which is an alcohol extraction where obviously we're pulling out those triterpenes. The hot water is going to be polysaccharides. The alcohol is going to be drawing out the triterpenes. That's really the only way to get all this goodness into your system. All right, all we're trying to do is break it up into small little pieces. You can see I've already got some here and it's really not hard at all. This is also a reason why you want it. Remember I was saying an eighth of an inch thick. I wouldn't go any larger than that. Um, if you do it that thin, when you break it up, um, First off, it's much easier to break, but also once you get it into the coffee grinder, uh, you you don't run the risk of damaging the coffee grinder once you get it that thin. So any of the larger pieces, you know, I'm not legalistic about it. I mean, I've got some heavier pieces than when I was cutting, you know, but I just set those off to the side. You know, and we'll just focus on those thin pieces right now. See how small they are? Now, obviously, I've got a mortar and pestle here. Uh, you can just grind it this way, too. Now, it does take a little extra work, but it does work just fine. I mean, it'll grind up if you don't have a coffee grinder. This one, this way works just as good. But let's use a coffee grinder. All right, check it out. You can see, not too big, small pieces. Let's go ahead and grind this sucker up. Going to get it too powdery. Look at that. Look at all that goodness. Yeah. Now, when you grind it, keep in mind, uh, you're actually getting a lot of mushrooms in here. I mean, obviously, the more we fill it, the more we're going to have. You're going to have far more in here than you would if you did slices. So definitely grind it because it's really going to increase uh, the potency. All right, and just to show, look, that's my milk jug, right? Well, that ain't milk in there. That's actually moonshine. And the last time I did a video, I had several comments on how it wasn't moonshine. Well, this is moonshine. It definitely is moonshine. Hope you can see that light up or not. Ow, that's hot. Oh, yeah, it's lit but you just can't see the flame. Okay, so I had to actually turn out the lights so you could see the blue flame. Woo-wee, that's good stuff. All right, don't want to waste any, so I'll go ahead and just pour that in there. And let's just go ahead and probably get just a little bit over where it was as far as height, just to fill it up right up over the top of of all the mushroom that I've grinded up there. And that swirl that around, make sure it's all down in there good. All right, and that is it. I mean, we're gonna let that shit marinate for about six months, let it fall in love, let all that goodness come out of it. And you're gonna shake this 
uh, I would say every other day, maybe every three days. Don't be legalistic about it. Just remember to shake it, put it in a nice cool spot, nice dark cool spot and, and let her go. After six weeks, strain it, you got your tincture. You got your alcohol extraction. Awesome. Now you don't have to use moonshine. I mean, I guess I'm kind of nostalgic about it. I mean, I just think it's super cool that back in the 1800s and early 1900s, they were using tinctures as medicine back then. Uh, and they were using it with moonshine with grain alcohol. So, I mean, it wasn't like they could go out to, you know, the liquor store or wherever and buy, you know, organic vodka. Now you can use that. I don't have any problems with that. I just, I don't know. There's something cool about doing it the old school way. All right, the birch polypore, man, fantastic medicinal mushroom. So definitely, if you get an opportunity, go harvest some, dry it out, make a tincture, maybe make some tea. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, thanks for spending your time with me. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Slap that like button. I'll talk to you.